All right, time for another DraftPhysics.com, DebatePhysics.com also, but uh, yes, not too much in the way of any kind of rational counter-arguments to be made to any of the points I will raise. And so I want to do this little add-on just because the lever argument is decisive, uh, and, but something as simple as a spinning top for example really illustrates it better than talking about a balance i suppose you know just because it's really got both elements in it so if you had a top um and you're going to just spin it okay um and we were going to put what we were going to weight the top so we have the capacity to put weights on it um the idea would be it's too bad that's not exactly symmetrical but whatever um, we can put f the four pounds at one distance, okay, four pounds, one distance, or we could put one pound four distances, okay, <laughs> and the fact is, is the velocities will equal those distances from the fulcrum, and that a uh, one mass, okay, moving four velocity will balance perfectly a four mass moving one velocity, and that basically disproves kinetic energy because kinetic energy is saying that a four mass, okay, uh, moving one velocity equals uh, one mass going two velocity. Okay, and obviously that doesn't, it's not the same momentum, obviously, and it's also, it just fails, it doesn't work. Uh, and that's what they say gravity does. So if I did a spinning top with these weights, it would tip over. So that's sort of showing you that the force of gravity, as it's collected, is not evenly collected by the two objects. The heavy object, the four mass, collects more gravity, and it will tilt Okay, the um, top if I put the one mass at two distances it won't work. I have to put the one mass at four distances so it's moving four times the speed and it's four times the distance from the fulcrum. That will work. So the lever says, the spinning top says, a four mass going one velocity equals a one mass going four velocity. Okay, just that simple. Oh, you can't see that, really? Well, it doesn't really matter. I said it. Okay, so the other advantage of the top is, so first it's doing the lever. It's basically telling you, okay, it doesn't balance. And secondly, it's doing the rotation, so you have also the momentum, linear momentum argument. So one force is gravity. That's weighing the things, okay? And that's telling you one mass at f four times the velocity or four times the distance equals the four mass at one. All right, and <coughs> the rotational energy you're going to put in. So gravity did one test, and it, and obviously, if you did the spinning top <laughs> so with your weight distribution, it would fail with your argument about which ones have what energy, and obviously from gravity. And then if you put your energy in to spin the top and you do your, so I, and I put a little, let's say I just put a guide here so it can't tip over. So now this top can spin and it won't tip because of the uneven weights. Well now it won't spin right either though. It'll process because the weights will be uneven. The amount of momentum, angular moment, momentum, won't be equal. A one mass at two distances is just going to go twice the velocity and twice the velocity will not equal a four mass at one velocity. So it will fail to demonstrate your theory to be correct. And it will be saying quite overtly that, no, it's wrong. So it sort of kills the two birds with one stone, uh, both in the case of the linear velocity and in the case of the velocity, the momentum acquired through gravity. All right, so I thought of another way I can... So that's it for the lever argument. And so I'm just going to add this one in just because of people... They obviously don't understand what gravity is. So the simple analogy for gravity is, is that you could think of your... whatever you're dropping in gravity as just being atoms or 
electrons and protons. But let's just say atoms for the sake of simplicity. It's the electrons and protons that are really getting affected by the gravity. We'll just say the atoms are. And let's just say all the atoms are the same. So we make two things out of the same material. And the only difference between the objects is they're a number of atoms. So one has four times as many atoms. <laughs> okay, 4x the atoms. Um, so it's the same thing as just basically saying, look, they're little, if I made these into the atoms themselves, into little catchers, okay, um, you can understand that if I have one catcher and then I have four catchers over here, all right, and the force is a constant force raining down at the speed of light, okay, <laughs> very fast, um, <clears throat> and all you're really saying is, is it's just going to be a time thing. You have four things capable of catching the force here, and only one thing here. So whatever happens to this one will happen to these four. And so you're just obviously, they're going to move the same speed because they're all collecting at the same rate. And it's just that this object in total will collect in the end more force. And it will land, showing it has more force. So even though it moved at the same speed, because they're collecting the gravity at the same rate, the fact is it collected more gravity because it collects gravity based on its mass. And I don't know why that's so objectionable, uh, but obviously that's how things collect gravity. Gravity mass is essentially the side of, size of your sail. Uh, it's basically saying how much wind can you catch. Or it would be, uh, I've used the bucket analogy, where it's just a bucket and you're catching rain in it. Four buckets are going to catch four times as much rain. And they're, but they're going to fall at the same rate. You can't fall any faster each bucket. Um, and so it perfectly explains why when this the four pound thing hits the ground, it's going to hit with a lot more force than the other thing. So if we let this fall twice as long, and that's all it'll be, four times the height, it's only four twice the time. So what's your argument? I mean, Obviously, it's only going to be collecting twice as the time. The force is constant. You already heard that statement made. Um, yes, it's going to travel three times the distance here. Okay, so this one stopped at one distance. So 1d. Okay, this one's going to get four distances. Okay, but it's going to be doing those distances in units of time. And one distance is one unit of time. Three distances is going to be the same unit of time. Just one second, let's say. So it's only two seconds to drop. It's going to go this whole distance. And it's just going to collect 9.8, as is proven by the result, which is it's only going twice the velocity, 19.6. 19. 19.6. 19 so it obviously... Um, <clears throat> you know, as it's gaining velocity, it's moving through the gravity, going the same way as the gravity, and it's uh, obviously going to collect less gravity because it's moving as it's collecting the gravity. So in one second, it'll collect the same amount, but it's obviously going to move across more territory because it's moving much faster. Mm -hmm. I mean, you can't understand that? Uh, but we've already sort of been over this. I mean, obviously, this is only 4.9 meters of distance. Okay. <laughs> and this is three units of that, or, you know, you could just round it off to 15. Um, and that's exactly as Galileo predicted, you know, 1, 3, 5, 7. So it all fits as just being, uh, uh, you're just collecting force from gravity. It's a constant force raining. You're collecting it with your atomic bits. They collect evenly, and there's just no logical way to say this somehow collected four times as much, because it's 9.8 meters per one second. It's only two units of time. There's only twice the velocity. How did it collect the extra energy without collecting any velocity? I mean, I just I don't know how you can't understand the argument. So anyway, um, to me, it's a better explanation. Uh, you, you have to really understand that gravity is not affecting you, the big object. It's affecting you, the little tiny pieces. That's what's moved by gravity. That's what 
that's the distinction. Gravity is the only force that moves us evenly. That is, it doesn't push on us. Okay, it doesn't push my feet. It doesn't push me in the head. It doesn't push some part of me. It pushes every single bit of me. And there's no other force that I know of that does that, except for something like magnetism or something. You need a hell of a lot of magnetism to cause that effect. And so then Einstein comes up with this equivalency principle that's somehow being pushed from my feet. And an elevator is the same thing as being pushed, having every one of my atoms pushed. It's not the same thing. It's not equivalent. Um, <clears throat> because obviously the force isn't as even. Uh, you could just say right off the bat. And um, the only thing I feel, right, gravity, when it's pushing me, I can't feel it because it's everything's moving at the same speed. So how could I feel any difference when nothing's different? And it's only when I hit the ground that I can feel the difference because the ground isn't moving and it forces me not to move. And I can certainly feel that difference. And it starts at my feet and it moves all the way up. I mean, it's just so simple and obvious. I just, I, it's just hard to understand why you people are so belligerently resistant to the simple, logical explanation and prefer to believe in woo and nonsense. I just don't get it. <laughs> yeah, I just didn't think everybody was a. Ew! I don't, you know, I don't even what, what's the proper word for it? You know, a whore for fables and bullshit. Yuck! They all want to just live in a fake and phony, um, make-believe, gingerbready kind of silly verse. Oof. Hard to understand that. Alright, so anyway, till the next time. I think that's all we need. I probably should just pause and say, but did I miss something in that argument? I mean, I think it's a simple enough argument. So anyway, I'll write it up in some form or another. And uh, you can explain. Why does the spinning top, why is it lying about what balances what? No. How come it can't see what you say is its real energy of those moving bits? You're saying they have real energy and somehow the top can't notice the real energy. It's not affected by the real energy. Somehow you put the real energy in when you spun it. Somehow you conserve the momentum. It's spinning at the proper speed for the energy you put in. But somehow there's actually more energy somehow. Somehow? If I didn't put it in, how could it be there? I mean, that's, you know, we're back to the 25 times the fuel to go five times as fast. You would notice if I put, if I put 25 times the energy in and the top is only spinning with five momentum, so to speak, I'm going to feel like something's wrong. I put 25 in. How come I'm not seeing 25? All right. Well, anyway. Just, just, just sadly, you just I just don't know how you can know it's 9.8 meters per unit of time and then think it acquires power or force over distance when it's 9.8 meters per a unit of time, not per a unit of distance. <laughs> Uh, how could you not get that? Anyway, that'll be a separate paper.